This is our dissection project, and the first organism that we dissected was the worm. Its derived characteristic is the segmented body, and its scientific name is the Lumbricus terrestris. Uh, the niche of the worm is that it lives in the top 20 centimeters of the soil. Its habitat is the soil and forest areas, and its relationship, food relationship is that it feeds off of the soil, and when the worm dies, it provides nutrients for the plants. Uh, the two adaptations that the worm makes is that it has very thin skin, which helps to absorb oxygen easier, and then it is slimy and smooth, which helps to which helps them burrow into the tunnels in the ground easier. And then here's two pictures that we took during the dissection. The picture on the left shows the thin skin of the worm, which helps to let the oxygen pass through easier. And then the picture on the right shows how the skin gets thicker uh, in the areas near the vital organs to protect them. The second organism that we dissected was the starfish, and it works by the seawater moves into the madreporite, and then into the stone canal, the ring canal, and then the radio canal. The radio canal carries the seawater to the two feet, which uses the seawater to filter out oxygen in the water. The derived characteristic of the starfish is that its body is flat, and its scientific name is the Asterias rubens. Its niche is that it controls the shallow water ecosystem, and it ha its habitat is that it mostly lives in coral reefs. Its feeding relationship is that it eats mostly mollusks, and then any sea animal with a, any sea animal with a mouth large enough to eat the starfish will eat them. And then the adaptations are that it has its mouth in its stomach, which allows it to eat much larger, larger organisms than if the mouth was on its foot. And then the starfish can breathe and drop water from its tubed feet. And then here's the first three pictures from our dissection. The far left picture shows the madreporite, which is the initial, was where the seawater initially enters. And then the middle picture shows the radio canal, and then the tubed feet, which is where, which is what uh, filters out the oxygen. And then these three pictures show the other pictures from the dissection. The ring canal and the stone canal are both uh, steps in getting the, the seawater to the two feet. And then the dermal gills uh, serves for respiration and uh, waste removal. The third organism that we dissected was the crayfish. Its derived characteristic is having adjointed appendages, and its scientific name is the Camber's bartani. The niche of the crayfish is that it is an omnivore that eats aquatic plants and has a small invertebrate. The habitat of the crayfish is freshwater, and its feeding relationship is that it eats small animals and plants, and then large sea bass eat the crayfish. The adaptations of the crayfish is that it has large claws in order to easily catch prey and to scare off predators, and then their gills pull moisture from the air as well as water so they can breathe well in the air and in the water. And then these two pictures that we have from the crayfish, the one on the left shows the gills under a microscope. The gills are used for respiratory functions. <laughs> and then the picture on the right shows the gills attached to the leg. And then this video shows how when the legs are moved, the gills also move. Before the fourth organism that we dissected was the frog. Its derived characteristic is the pharyngeal slits, and its scientific name is the Lithobates palustris. The frog's niche is that it is a carnivore that eats fish, insects, and other frogs. And then the habitat of the frog is that it is areas near water so they can easily reproduce. The feeding relationship is the, of the frog is that it eats insects, and large birds in the ecosystem will eat the frogs. The adaptations of the frog is that it has small windpipes, so food can't easily get stuck in their airway. And then it has powerful legs, so it can easily swim and jump for a long time without getting tired. And then here we have two pictures from our dissection. The picture on the left shows the left lung of the frog, and then the picture on the right shows the right lung of the frog. And then here in this video, you can see as when we blow air into the mouth of the frog, the lungs of the frog blow up. The next organism that we looked at was the planaria. Its derived characteristic is tripoblastic, which means it has three germ layers. And then the scientific name of the planaria is the planaria torva. And then this picture on the right, we can see where my mouse is that this will soon regenerate and is in the process of regeneration. And then the niche of the planaria is that it is parasitic. Its habitat is saltwater and freshwater ponds and rivers. And then the feeding relationship is that it eats living or dead organisms that they suck up with their muscular mouths. 
And then the adaptations of the planaria is that it has thin skin for effective diffusion in its aquatic environment. And then it has a hydrostatic skeleton to further help it adjust to aquatic life. And the respiratory system of the planaria is made up of the pharynx and mouth. The fourth protus we looked at was the volvox. It, the volvox is derived characteristic, but it has green color because of chlorophyll and starch fat and oil food reserves. The volvox's scientific name is the volvox tertius. The volvox's niche is an aquatic autotroph. Its habitat is in fresh water. The volvox's feeding relationship is autotrophs eaten by small sea creatures like shrimp and aquatic worms. The adaptations of a volvox is that it has two flagellas that help it move easily through the water, and it takes in oxygen from around itself in order to perform photosynthesis. The next organism that we looked at was the hydra. Its derived characteristic is a gastrovascular cavity, and the scientific name of the hydra is the Linnaeus veridissima. And then this picture on the right under the microscope shows the hydra and the layer the layer that we can see the outermost layer is the epidermis which is used for breathing and then the niche of the hydra is sunlight and brine shrimp larvae and daphnia the habitat of the of the uh, hydra is fresh water and the relation the feeding relationship is that it eats water fleas and then and small worms the adaptations of the hydra is that it developed an epidermis to be able to breathe and then it has stinging tentacles to easily catch prey. And in order to perform respiratory functions, it uses passive diffusion. This is our cladogram that shows all the organism's relationships between its respiratory systems. The, um, all the organisms stem from, the, from an ancient common ancestor. The volvox uses diffusion through its skin or its body. The planaria uses diffusion through its gastrovascular cavity located on its thin body. The hydra uses diffusion through its gas gastrovascular cavity on its mouth. The starfish use diffusion through their dermal gills. The crayfish use diffusion through their gills on their legs. The worm uses diffusion through its skin, and the frog uses diffusion through its skin and lungs.